Right guys, welcome to this video on lung volumes. We're just going to spend a bit of time looking at the various different uh, volumes within the lungs and how they relate to one another. So on the screen, um, I've got a simplified diagram of the lungs um, and it's colour coded just to show the different components or the different lung volumes that we're going to be talking about. There are in fact loads and loads of different lung volumes that we could talk about, but we're just going to focus on uh, four or five in this, uh, in this little lesson. So the first one we're going to look at is coloured in blue here and labelled TV. Now TV stands for tidal volume, tidal volume, and like a tide that goes in and out uh, at the seaside. Uh, so the tidal volume is basically just the volume of air um, that is inhaled or exhaled in one ventilation cycle. So while you're sat um, watching this video, just breathing normally uh, in and out, the average uh, for an adult, whether that's male or female, the average tidal volume is about 500 millilitres um, and that's the, the volume of air that you're breathing in and out uh, with each ventilation cycle. The second one we've got here um, is the total lung volume and that's as simple as it sounds. The total lung volume is essentially the, the entirety of the space within the lungs that could potentially be filled up with air. So it's the maximum amount of air in the lungs once you've had a maximum or maximal inspiration. So you breathe in as much as you possibly can. You've really filled your lungs with air. That volume of air, the total lung volume, um, is the total or the maximum amount of air that you can get into your lungs. The vital capacity shown here in yellow is once, for example, you filled your lungs with uh, as much air as you can possibly breathe in, as you can possibly inhale, once you've breathed all that in and then you expire as much as you possibly can, so you really force that air back out of your lungs, that volume of air is called the vital capacity. It's the maximum amount of air that can be expired after a maximum inhalation. So to total lung volume is the total amount you can get in with a maximal inspiration. And then when you breathe out maximally and, and really force and, and press those, um, pull those intercostal muscles and pull that rib cage down and so on to get as much air as you, out as you possibly can, that volume of air that is leaving the lungs is the vital capacity. And you'll notice from the diagram that you cannot actually fully um, exhale all of the air that's in your lungs. There is always a little bit left over. Um, and that's represented here at the bottom of the lungs um, in, in the pink colour uh, labelled RV, which stands for residual volume. It's residual because it's left over. That's what that word means. So the residual volume is the amount of air that remains in the lungs after you've forced out as much air as you possibly can. So total lung volume, get as much air in as you can and fill up those lungs to their maximal capacity. Vital capacity then is the air that you can then, after that, force out of your lungs. Uh, and then any air that's left behind, the volume of air that's left behind is called the residual volume because it's left there afterwards. So the tidal volume, to come back to the first one, the tidal volume can actually change. The tidal volume does change um, in response to exercise. So let's just have a, a little look uh, how the tidal volume changing can influence the total volume of air that we can get in and out and indeed use in the respiratory system. So as we exercise, our tidal volume, so that, that 500 millilitres of air, it goes up. We breathe basically more deeply. We breathe more deeply. We actually, with each ventilation cycle, are taking in and then exhaling a larger volume of air. So the tidal volume during exercise will go up, but that's not the only thing that increases. Also, when, when we exercise, the, the frequency of breathing also goes up. Our breathing rate or our respiratory rate also goes up. That's the number of breaths that we take per minute. So when the tidal volume goes up, that's the amount or the volume of air that comes in and out with each ventilation cycle. When that is increased, and the number of breaths we're taking per minute is also increased, we need to multiply those two things together to work out the total volume of air that is being breathed in and out over the course of a minute. And we call that minute ventilation. 
And what's really important is to recognise that since tidal volume goes up during exercise and respiratory rate goes up during exercise, we can actually have a very, very significant increase in the volume of air that's being inhaled and exhaled whilst we're exercising. Here are some basic numbers just to emphasise this point. So let's say at rest, for example, that you breathe roughly 15 times per minute. And that's a relatively high estimate, but sort of 13 times, 14, 15 times, there or thereabouts. It's just to give us some numbers to work with. And again, the average tidal volume for an adult, whether that's male or female, is approximately 500 milliliters. So if you've got 0.5 liters of tidal volume and we've, we're breathing in and out, sort of roughly 15 times, we've got the ventilation cycle going on about 15 times per minute, we can multiply those two numbers together and work out that we're at rest, we are exchanging or breathing in and out approximately seven and a half litres of air per minute. Now then, if we then engage in some maximal exercise, it may be that our tidal volume could go up significantly, and it would go up significantly, um, up to a fairly large uh, volume, in fact, probably um, almost up to vital capacity. So tidal volume can work its way up almost to vital capacity. Um, and so let's say, for sake of argument, during exercise in this example, um, our tidal volume is going to go from uh, the 500 millilitres at rest up to about two and a half litres um, per uh, ventilation cycle. But not only is that increasing, but also our breathing rate, our respiratory rate has gone up to, let's say, for a sake of argument, that our respiratory rate goes up to 50 breaths per minute. And that's not that's not an extraordinary amount. That, that's probably about right. Approximately, this is pretty maximal exercise, so approximately 50 breaths per minute. Now, by simply making that calculation of two and a half litres times by 50 breaths per minute, we're now looking at during exercise 125 litres per minute in terms of the minute ventilation. So again, a little reminder, minute ventilation is the total volume of air that's exchanged in a minute. So at rest, we can be at seven and a half litres and then during maximal exercise, we can be all the way up to 125 litres and maybe even beyond that, depending on uh, other genetic factors. Let's just have a look at these on a graph just briefly as we wrap up here. So on this graph, the first thing to notice is tidal volume. Again, is roughly about half a litre and it's shown here in the middle of the graph um, and the cycle. Uh, as it goes up and down, represents just normal breathing. Then if we were to take in a maximal inhalation, uh, or maximal inspiration, we would shoot right up, the volume in the lungs would shoot right up to, it, to its maximum. It would shoot right up to its um, total lung volume. And in this example, we're saying that's approximately six litres. And then if we have a maximal expiration or exhalation and we push out as much air as we possibly can, and this might happen during exercise, for example, when the intercostal muscles, internal intercostal muscles are really pulling down hard on the rib cage and reducing that space, we are going to go down in terms of the volume of air in the lungs down to about one and a half litres. But we won't drop any lower than that because that um, that volume is what we've already mentioned, is the residual volume. It's always going to be there in the bottom of the lungs. And the purpose of that really essentially is to prevent the lungs from collapsing. And let's say then after that, we return to normal breathing. So that space there between uh, the residual volume and the total lung capacity, that's the vital capacity. And then, of course, we've got here that the total lung capacity for this particular individual is approximately six litres. So hopefully you can see there how uh, tidal volume, vital capacity, total lung capacity and residual volume all fit together in terms of lung volumes. Thanks for watching. Hope that's been helpful.